All right, stand by. Roll sound. Speed. Roll camera. Speeding. Slate. Scene one, take one. Mark. And action. Hey everybody, welcome to Bernie's Apple Box. It's Friday, two o'clock, and we got a great show for you today, something I'm really excited to be about. When I got in the business, one of the first people that I met, and he taught me so much over the years, and of course I've wanted to have him on for a long time, my great, great friend, OC legend, Gary Hyman. <laughs> All right, Gary, how you doing? Very good. Thank awesome. you, Bernie, for having thank, me. Thank on your you for show. coming down. Thank you for coming down. You know but it. I'll tell you, I ask a lot of people to come down and talk to me. Everybody th it thinks it's a good idea until they actually get asked, and then it's like, oh, I don't know what I'll talk about. What right. do we say? How long will <laughs> it take? Oh, an hours a long time. All that. Everything you said to me, Gary. But it is so great to have somebody like Gary on, and I'll tell you. This guy, if you spend any amount of time with him, in 20 minutes, you're going to be exhausted from laughing so hard. <laughs> He's one of the funniest guys I know and one of the smartest business guys I know and networkers in the business. So that's something I want to dig in with you, Gary, and, and find out about. How you been, buddy? Very good. Very good. Uh, hot day in the OC. Hot and, day in the uh, OC. Glad to be here. And yeah, yeah. And being on your show, I, I knew one day that... This was going to happen. One day you would you would climb the golden mm -hmm. stairs to the top of the precipice and yes. be on my show. Absolutely. Thank you, Gary. Absolutely. Thank it's you. only onward and upward from here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for from your ear, from your mouth to God's ears, yeah, please. Thank you. you know. Thanks, Bird. So, um, <clears throat> let me go back because you've got quite a history, and I want to cover that. But let me go back to the first time I met you. Yes. And that was at Roland Cannemeyer's old stage called The Stage, yes. ironically enough. And um, uh, I met you, we were on a, sh a small shoot, I think it was with Tom McDonald. Yes. And um, I remember meeting you that day, and then you came out and says, hey, hey, what are you doing afterwards? You want to go somewhere, get, get a drink or whatever? You know, of course, I don't drink, but, but we went out afterwards. Mm -hmm. And you were the first person who really opened my eyes to networking. Yes. And just what you did right there, invited me out, a new guy, but sure. just almost still on the PA status, uh, to come out, meet you, and and get to know me better and stuff, and conversely with you. I had already, always been in a nine to five situation, a sure. job. I didn't really need to network that much. But just from that one meeting with you, I figured it out. I go, hey, I've got to meet more people like Gary. Absolutely. So you're you're one person who really set me on the course of a very what I consider a very successful career in networking with people, of building mm -hmm. business, of, of of finding different ways you can assist different businesses and Absolutely. what their goals are and, and stuff like that. But I know you go way back, way back. Absolutely. Tell me what year was it you first started becoming a freelancer? I suspect that was uh, the late 80s, in the late 80s. The late 80s. Uh, I, I have a in. feeling you're shaving some years off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you noticed, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, it was the late 80s. It was the late 80s. I could 80s. have possibly lived with the early 80s, but it was the <laughs> late, late 80s <laughs> that I had to call it on, Gary. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so what... It, it, in anything, what were you doing in the 70s? Well, in the 70s, I uh, went to college. Okay. Uh, that's, that's, that was the thing to do back then. Yeah. And um, I had a great time in college. Met a lot of great, interesting people. Yeah. And um, one day, my older brother and I, uh, we were at the Warehouse Records of Tapes. That's a place where you would buy records or tapes. And, okay, and that's the we'll co we'll cover yeah. that for we'll the younger people. What records right. and tapes, tapes are. were? Yes, yeah. uh, there'll be a whole course in that. Right. Um, so my brother and I, we noticed that to rent a movie, it was a legal form to fill out every single time. Oh, it was a process. It, it was a process. Yeah. And we kind of thought to ourselves, well, how can we maybe capitalize? On that process, and to and rent make it a movie, smoother. that was the the VCR, the yeah, old the, VHS, the VHS tape, right? Correct. You had to rent the cassette. Absolutely. Okay. So my brother went home. Brother and I went home. We brainstormed. We figured, well, wait a second. How about if we did home delivery? 
of these movies. Okay. So we got our uh, license, our business license, and we worked out of my mom's garage in the city of Lakewood. Wow. Right, where I was born and raised. <clears throat> wow. And it was a great process. And uh, the funny story was, uh, we back then, we didn't have money for advertising, so we would literally open the white pages and call everybody in a five-mile square <laughs> area. And we would say, hey, listen, we've got a brand-new company called Family Video. We would love to you know, service your needs and deliver the VHS movies right to your door. And I would say maybe one out of a hundred would say, oh, I've got a VCR, that's great. We'll let, uh, one you know, out we'll of a hundred. One out of a hundred, if we were, uh, yeah. Wow. If we're like, so my brother was a that's laborer. That's some dog oh, yeah. determination. Oh, oh absolutely, that yeah. absolutely. My brother was a, a laborer back then and he had a group of friends. And of course, uh, a lot of them loved to smoke pot. And, yeah, uh, so my I find that hard said, to believe, right, Gary, right. <laughs> but I'll go with you on this. So as for pay and a fun day, we, he would invite all of his buddies in that weren't working in the labor arena and make these phone calls. And, of course, everybody was high. They were nice. And, sure, and sure. It was, Why it, not? It was, you know, it, and it was an easy call. If you're going to be stoned, you may as well right. sit there and make a couple of calls couple anyway. Calls. You're not That's doing right. anything else anyway. Yeah. And right? my mom was a great cook. She brought the matzo ball soup in. <laughs> Even better. Away we go. Even better. So uh, we had a young, real young guy who uh, used to come by the house, cut the lawn, and uh, he was pretty ambitious. Uh, he, he used to dumpster dive at night just okay. for fun. And he was at the Warehouse Records and Tapes one night, and they... They, back then, for security purposes, they they never locked their 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 trash cans, their trash bins. Right. And uh, he dove in there and he grabbed out a box, a full box, of carbon carbonated paper or carbon paper that had everybody's name and information <laughs> who rented the movies at w Warehouse Records and Tapes. <laughs> and he brought it to us and said, "Hey, is this going to help you guys?" Uh, we go, "You're kidding oh me!" Oh my god. Oh and, my god. Now, wait a minute. Yeah. Let's just review. <laughs> right. Let's just, let's stop. I think this is a good point to just, let's stop and review. You and your brother are, are, are checking some of the tape shop, Absolutely. right? And, and you figure it's such a hassle renting these things. Right. Not only will we rent movies, which is a cutting edge business sure. at the time oh, that, yes. that was, but you're going to take the extra step and you're going to go ahead and deliver them. Absolutely. Because you can't afford the rent on a place anyway. Absolutely. Right? That yeah. was key. Yeah. So how do we get clients? Well, let's just do this. Let's just circle our finger on the white pages of a mm -hmm. phone book, like they don't have anymore, and, 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 and pick one out and just call people and see if they'll rent. We can go deliver it Absolutely. to them. And one in a hundred had a, v, a VCR. Back then. Back then. So you actually <clears throat> look for more data, right, to find out Absolutely. Who, who the people are. And that data exists in the form of carbon copies. Yes. In a dumpster. In a dumpster. You're brilliant. You're brilliant. <laughs> I mean, this is it. This is the yeah. classic startup. So go ahead. So, so the great part about uh, getting these carbon copies of uh, you know of customers yeah. is that we were able and to look. And you've just got the little impression on yeah, there. You absolutely. don't even have a piece of paper no. with it. No. Yeah. no. You've no. got the impression. No. So you're going, is that a five or a six? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, okay. it, was, it was spot on. Okay. So now we were making direct hits on our marketing and our advertising. Yeah, you knew these people had VCRs. Yeah, VCRs. And what they rented. Ah. That was key also, because ah. if we noticed they were renting only children's movies, right. of course we would tell them we had a huge selection <laughs> of children's movies. Now, if they were into the adult end, it, and we had we a huge We also have a huge collection, a huge of, collection of adult end. So, needs to say, the business skyrocketed. Awesome. It, it was great. Um, we hired three drivers and we drove around, uh, the front end of the delivery was easy. Yeah. That was totally easy because yeah. they were home waiting Got for you. that VHS tape. The back end the next day for the pickup, that was a tough part. That's a tougher thing because That's they're done with the movie. They're, they're not with thinking it. about the movie Absolutely. anymore. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> so we decided that, um, well, maybe we should open a little shop. So we, we found a little place for rent, and there was enough business coming through the door to keep the doors open, to pay the rent, of course. And what year and was this? Boy, uh, I would say uh, early 80s. Early 80s. Early 80s. Okay. And uh, uh, the reason why I recall that is because we changed our name several times. For what reason? I have yeah. no, no clue. But during the 84 Olympics, we called our company called 
Video Olympics, V I D E O L Y P I X, picks for motion pictures. So you were just watching the news that morning, and whatever the popular word well, was, the word was that's the day. You well, your the Olympics name to were in <laughs> L.A. for a, we had it for at least True, for three that's months. That's right. No, you're you're so right. So yeah. that was uh, that was a, a good name to have, and then eventually, eventually, we hit the jackpot. Yeah. Okay. We decided to do something no other little mom and pa shop would do. Mm -hmm. We moved across the street from the warehouse records and tapes. And everybody thought we, we were just fools for doing that. But it turned out the opposite. Brilliant move. Right across Brilliant the street from the competition. Move. Yeah. Um, there was a shop that was open, and uh, we put up our signage, Video Olympics. Yeah. And everybody said, every, every you know, said they were naysayers. But yeah. what happened, we got the overflow. Absolutely. From the people, they, they, they would walk in to warehouse records and tapes, they'd, they'd get frustrated because of the long lines and they have to fill out the information every time. And as they came out, they spotted our store and walked across the street. Oh, uh, I think that's and we brilliant. Hooked them. We I hooked think them. that is brilliant, Gary. Yeah. I think, I, in fact, I'll tell you, and it, not all of us now have ever walked into a video rental store, but I remember my experience mm -hmm. doing so, and it's overload. It's the immediate thing that you get, oh, I wanted to see that movie. Oh, I wanted to see that one, too. Oh, I wanted to see this Absolutely. one. Because most of the movies you've never seen. Sure. And there's a lot of titles you don't even know what they are. So you get that overload. So it, it, I remember going into them, and I would be like at a loss. Well, I want to get this one, this one, this one. I just got one night's watching. I'll barely right. watch that movie tonight. Sure. I don't need three of them. You right. know what I mean? But the hassle of going back and forth from the store, that's all that stuff. I could see somebody going into a Blockbuster, mm -hmm. looking at that and go, let's just go see what these guys got. Absolutely. Right? And probably a smaller selection, we were. you're going to get down to your choice. And yeah. if you were going to rent th the movie that you see at your place, you're not going to go back over to Block Blockbuster no. and rent it. You're going to rent it at the second location. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And Brilliant. One, Brilliant. One, one uh, key marketing tool we used was a membership. Back then, back then it was that a was membership a rarity, plan. right? And membership we started was a membership. A rarity. So we tied it into the Olympics. We had a bronze membership, a silver, and a gold. Okay. And the bronze membership was twenty-five dollars, okay. and all your movies were three dollars across the board. The silver membership was fifty dollars, and it was two dollars for any movie. Wow. And the gold membership was one hundred dollars. And okay. remember, these are lifetime memberships. Right. At, and the movies is the, were only Is $1. the business still over? Well, unfortunately not. Open? Unfortunately not. <laughs> so all those guys are lifetimes. They're uh, out A lifetime, yeah. yeah. We were hoping they were deceased. So uh, uh, it was a great run, uh, unfortunately. So the, uh -huh. that, just in this, sure. in this thing, how much business did that membership model build for you? It was amazing. Uh, all we did was we simply bought a, a, a heat shrink uh, machine, right. very cheap, maybe a hundred dollars. Right. And we, we got a little cardboard card with their name on it and we put it in the plastic, sent it through the heat, the heat, uh, machine. You laminated. And, you laminated. Yeah, yeah. and now they have a card okay. permanently in their wallet or purse. Okay. It was fantastic. Yeah. So that's their, their, every time they open their wallet, there's a memory there. Hey, we can go get a movie. We can go get a movie yeah, anytime yeah, other yeah. than the warehouse where right. they didn't have anything. Uh, no membership anything. or anything. Yeah. No, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. nothing. So, yeah. Uh, and one little marketing ploy that I used also was that um, we always gave them a receipt of what movies they rented so they can keep track of what what, uh, what they've seen already. So what I, oh, I that's, developed that's was a, a nice service absolutely, as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And what I did with the receipts is that I made a program up like green stamps or blue stamps or whatever stamps, okay, yeah. the green stamp program. And now program. we're in the green stamps. Yeah, that's, program. That's, that's way, way back. back. But basically... Um, the more movies you rented and more receipts you had that you have saved up, you could turn it in for merchandise. Uh -huh. And I would key the merchandise on products that came out of the store, like a blank VHS tape, yeah. a head cleaner, okay. anything to do, free with movie your, rentals yeah. with that business. Oh, that's cool. And if you're able to save up 1,000 receipts, you'd get a brand new VHS machine. 1,000 receipts? They could and have bought the store for that. Right. We, we figured that would be about $5,000 <laughs> uh, because every receipt yeah. was $5, so, yeah. uh, an average of $5. So it's $5,000. And the average VHS machine ranged from two to $500. 
Okay, so but no brainer. It was a no brainer. But nobody ever saved them up because no. what would happen? They'd save up thirty to forty to fifty, and they got themselves a uh, you know VHS uh, blank well, tape get or the, a movie. The quickest thing they could of get. Of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, instead he got the kids all there. All right, kids, put that one. But, in. but it yeah. was good because we were able to put a membership card in their wallet. Yeah. And they saved the receipts in one of their drawers. Yeah, so every time brilliant. they open the drawer, there's receipts reminding them. Of, of our business, and they also have one in their car. You know, their, their, uh, Tell me what happened first. to the business. Well, unfortunately, uh, the warehouse records teams got smart. They yeah. noticed that we were we were pulling business from them, so yeah. they went to a dollar a movie. Okay. Any any movie a dollar, and if they didn't have the movie in when you went to go get it, they gave you a coupon for next time for the movie to be free. Oh. So at that point, instead of making revenue or profit on the right. VHS movies, they were using that as what's called a loss leader. Sure. And they would put the it's VHS. it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. Because they know the average person is going to spend $5 on entertainment right. going in the store. So if the movie's a dollar yeah. and they put, they put their, their department, VHS rentals, in the back of the store, you have to go through the cassettes, the T-shirts, the everything, the everything before, <clears throat> uh, be, as you enter and as you leave, and then you will spend that three or four, five dollars somewhere in that store on the sure, way out. Sure. And then they have you on the back end when you return the movie. Yeah, they're taken to the same place. They're taking the same yeah. place. Either you're going to rent yeah. more movies or you're going to buy. And while you're there, out. you're going to pick up another movie. Absolutely. Yeah. Or yeah. merchandise. If merchandise. You, whatever. you know, they uh, you yeah. know usually have your yeah. kids with you and yeah. they want something or. Your daughter, son, okay. you know, uh, okay. everybody wants something. So did they just beat you? Yeah, they beat us out. They, yeah. they beat our business. We saw our business right when they hit that dollar movie. We and and they you guaranteed the, the movie. We saw the dip. And, we and did you to try out. to match it? Um, we tried to match it to a certain degree, but at that point it was you a little. You can't late. do it. You're no. not to scale. No, yeah. not to scale. Yeah. Yeah. Not not to scale. That's interesting. So then, so you've already been in the movie business. Yes. All right, and that that was a good move. You Absolutely. Saw that. Come and go. You had some great ideas, some sure. really innovating, Absolutely. kind of cutting edge ideas for the time. Absolutely. Too, because I, I remember those days quite well. Um, how did you transfer then making a living that way? And, and you were making a living, sure. right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, making a living that way and going to freelance. What, what took you, what, what guided you to that path? Absolutely. Well, my, uh, when I went to college, I uh, started out as a, a rec major because I love playing sports and being out in Mother Nature, getting the fresh air. Okay. But I noticed that at the end of the career, you would spend most of the time pushing paper at your local city office. Right. So I figure, well, I'd, I'd love just to be around people and enjoy life as much as possible. So I, I looked at the movie, movie making business. And I was back then. I was I had a little little regular eight super eight camera that I'd be making little yeah. movies with. Yeah. And my sister in law at the time recommended Cal State Long Beach. I got my bachelor's degree, and that's when uh, I started networking within the college ranks and meeting people on the outside of college and getting on little projects, and that really spurred my interest. So, mm -hmm. uh, packed so my bags college. and went to Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> As they that's, say. A good, that's a good place to take a break. I think we're just going to go to a, a little commercial here, and uh, we'll be right back with uh, Gary Hyman. Hi, I'm Bernie. I own Bernie's Grip and Lighting, San Diego Grip and Lighting, and Los Angeles Grip and Lighting. You know, we pride ourselves on not only renting you the best equipment, but also giving you the best crews. And one of our core values here at Bernie's Grip and Lighting is that we give you the highest production value in the world. And remember, people used to say national, local. No, we present world-class production value on every set. We also know Budgets are very tight these days, and you've got 10 hours to get what you need in the can. We move ahead, we move fast, and we know what you need. When you rent from Bernie's Grip and Lighting, you have a partner on your production for that day that is making sure you are well taken care of. So anytime you're in Southern California, give us a call at 714-609-3545 and we'll take very good care of you. See you on set.
Hey everybody, here with Gary Hyman today, good friend, old friend, like long, long <laughs> time friend. So we just been talking to Gary here and we are, uh, he has just gotten out of the uh, video rental business back in the day. <laughs> now he's just becoming a freelancer, so I want to continue on with his story here. Yes. So you liked it in college, you, you got a taste mm -hmm. of it in college, yes. and now your re movie rental business is over, Yes. and uh, now you're looking at freelancing a little absolutely, bit. Absolutely, absolutely. I was uh, real fortunate. I had a girlfriend at the time named Chris Fernandez, who used to work for a company called uh, Don Misher Productions. Okay. And um, she had recommended me, uh, one, one phase of Don Misher Productions was doing the Barbara Walter specials. Okay. And um, her specials came on right after the Oscars. Right. So it was a big, oh, I big time those. slot. I big, remember those. I remember those, yeah. So she recommended uh, me to um, get on the show as a production assistant. You know, okay. your yeah. first, yeah. first uh, entry level, level job, entry level sure. job. And it was a great, great introduction to the television business. Well, yeah, you were working with Barbara Walters, so yeah. you were seeing the top of the... Top of the TV oh, world the at TV that world. time. Yeah, she you was know, the highest paid, she was it. paid uh, woman in television at that time. She was it. She yeah. was great. Yeah, she, she was, was one great. of the top paid woman or not, I Absolutely. Think, at the time. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And uh, some interesting stories came out of that. Um, I remember one time we were doing the uh, Ronald Reagan. Okay. Who was in presidency back then. And uh, they had asked me to go back to the hotel and pick up a little recorder, audio recorder, for a transcription. Okay. So I raced back to the hotel. This is up in Santa Barbara, and he was up at yeah. the ranch at the yeah. time. And um, when I got back, of course, the security was, yeah, was there. They got to <laughs> go. Right they got to go. Yeah. Me. So <laughs> they asked me to get out of the car, and I completely forgot that my suitcase yeah. was, still in the, it was still in the trunk. <laughs> so um, one of the young military guys, Yeah. Popped it out, put it on the table, uh, and unzipped it. And he was going through my clothes, and uh, all of a sudden it hit me. I said, "Uh oh, goodness!" <laughs> I had a little pipe and a little bit of marijuana in there, and I thought to myself, "Well, this was a great career. This was <laughs> I guess I'll be serving time in Sing Sing." And the young guy must have been a previous stoner, yeah, because he, he sort of, I, I, according to my. He sort of looked at the pipe and the little bit of the pot I had yeah. and stuffed it right back in the, sh in the sock where I, I had it hidden. Yeah, yeah. Kind of deal. And just goes, all right, he's clean. And got back in and, wow, wow, wow I'm here to talk to you. Yeah, instead of, yeah. Instead of, you yeah, know, instead of breaking yeah. the rock and sinking. Yeah, that would have been a, that would have been yeah, a, a real embarrassment. I, I seriously don't know that you would have gotten... Busted, busted. Uh, back then, maybe, uh, maybe. Reagan had I can, some, uh, had some uh, interesting uh, drug policy. He wasn't a big stoner. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, Reagan was no. not a big stoner, to no, my, to but, my uh, recollection. That was great. Uh, had a great time with Barbara Walters, and then I. What was it like working for a high end? Uh, uh, because at, at that time, yeah. it might be you know, obviously, but 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 at that time, she was at the top oh, of yeah. her career. Absolutely, that's got to be a lot of pressure. And there's, and I know PAs there. They're almost like a oh, human yeah. expendable, unfortunately, oh, yes. at that time, because they come and go You're through the, the first productions. You're the first to go. Yeah. You're the first yeah. to go. As they say, yeah. crap rolls downhill. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, I was in and out of her office, and a lot of times I'd answer the phone, and the way I'd answer it would be uh, Barwall Productions, short for Barbara Walters. So yeah. So it'd be Barwall Productions, and, and a lot of times it was Barbara on the phone saying, oh, uh, get me Don, get, uh, get me Joanne, yeah. you know, uh, and... Uh, one day I remember, and it was it was in fact at, at that at the at the Reagan Ranch. Okay. And I was at the, I was, uh, you know, uh, getting the craft service table prepared, yeah. and Barbara Walters came down off the hill, and she's in deep thought, thinking about what questions to ask, and she says, uh, she says, uh, uh, oh, can you uh, get me some raisins? Mm -hmm. And um, and the way she said it, she had that lisp. Yeah. She says. She said to me, Wary, get me some waisins. Yeah. And I go, wide away. <laughs> and and she took one look at me and she says, and she says, Do you work? Do you work for my company? I said, Yes, I do. And she goes, Oh, that's fantastic. You answered the phone very nicely. I, I think I heard your name was Gary. And I said, Yeah, nice to meet you, Barbara. And that was my only shot at at uh, That's the only time you talked to her? I'm a top doctor. <laughs> in, the, in the two and a half years that I worked for her company. <laughs> 
You know what? That is probably exactly why you worked for her company for two and a half years. You were smart enough to keep your head down and your mouth shut. Absolutely. Nothing in this production world will buy you more than keeping your head down and your mouth shut. Absolutely. I agree. I agree 100%, Bernie. Uh, I've been on, uh, I'm going to say millions of sets, but thousands of sets. Tens of thousands uh, in your case, I would say. And, you know... People will always rate you for what comes out of your mouth. That's right. And uh, the smart ones always kept their mouth shut. That's right. Yep, That's I, right. I have to agree with you. That's agree. right. I've I've learned that along the way, easy and hard. Yeah. I've yep. learned it both ways. So, Absolutely. So, it, so now you're a PA, you're in the yeah, business. Now the tell mix. me, and, and you became a, mm-hmm. a pretty famous audio guy in Orange County. Well, what what Where was that trend? How did that transition yes. come? You know, uh, while I was on the set with Barbara Walters, I, I looked at every job position. And I said, well, that, that lighting guy sure has to schlep a lot of stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, the gaffer has a lot of responsibility. He's got to give orders out. And he's got to, he's got to do some schlepping. And yeah. then the camera guy has got to go handheld. And that seems like a lot of work to do. Yeah. The director's got a lot of pressure, the producer. And all of a sudden, I looked at the sound guy. Yeah. And one eye open. I, uh, one eye open <laughs> and the donut just seemed to roll out of his hand between takes. And I thought, I want to do his job. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, uh, that, 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 yeah. that seemed to be the best. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, I did a, a lot of low-end infomercials back then. Infomercials right. were, were, the, were the craze right. back then. And uh, started I mean, learning. There, started there learning. were so many low-end uh, oh, uh, uh, infomercials back then. It was, absolutely. It was hard not to, I mean... You couldn't miss on him. There was no. some, but there was work every day. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. <clears throat> uh, so uh, you know, a lot of times uh, in the beginning, I just showed up and the gear was waiting for me. Right. You know, the production company already had bought the gear, uh, and I like, would use like their gear. gear. You mean the sound gear? Yeah, the sound yeah, gear. Yeah, absolutely. And then and how I, did you mm-hmm. how did you like convince somebody you were a sound guy? Did you just start saying, "Hey, I can do audio"? Well, did you, uh... well, your name starts getting around. Yeah, you know yeah. that. Uh, hey, uh, Gary does good quality audio. Yeah. he's you know he's nice with the talent. Uh, you know, nice with the producer, director. Right. And uh, you know knows when knows when to talk, knows when not to talk. Yeah, that's the key. Yeah, that, that's the key. And, well, you're hitting it on the head, and this is something that anybody who knows me knows. I I, I preach this. You know what I mean. It's about your personality. Absolutely. It's about how easy you are to get along with somebody for 10 hours. It's about mm-hmm. understanding the talent's nervous or the, the, the CEO is nervous that sure. I'm going to mic. It's those things, and really, it's so much, and this is where you shine and you still shine mm-hmm. always, is it's personality. It's, a, it's an easy-to-get-along-with personality. It's somebody who will stop, listen, and answer your questions. That's the key. Yeah. That's yeah. the key. You know, uh, I know a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, camera ops and sound techs and, you know, gaffer scripts. And, you know, the, the their ability is fantastic. Absolutely. But sometimes saying the wrong thing at the wrong time, that could, that could lose your producer, that client. Yeah. That could be very costly. Oh, oh I, I very this, costly. anybody who knows me knows that that is yeah. my, that you're on set and you need to be impro- impressing the client's Absolutely. client. That's why the client Absolutely. will hire you back. Absolutely. Is because you're impressing. I, you know, the thing with, with us, Gary, and I know, and I, we'll get back to your story, mm-hmm. but I just want to reiterate this is, there's a trap we set for ourselves as freelance production guys. And what that is, is we're used to being on set. Right. Our set is almost more comfortable to us than our own home. Because on that set, we're there for a reason. We know how that set operates. Mm-hmm. We know how we operate in that set. Sure. So you are in your total comfort zone. You know what I mean? I am when I'm gaffing. When I have a truck and a crew mm-hmm. out there on a set... I'm feeling really good because I am making things happen. Right. You know, and that is uh, that is so important. When you have that, you're in control and you're too relaxed. Then you're getting on the phone, talking on the set, not thinking about who's listening to you, and you're talking in too loud a voice. You know what I mean? Sure. Oh, I don't do half days. Sorry, right. I don't. You know, <laughs> or saying something that right. you're not thinking about sure. that's really not inappropriate. Sure. But you're in a work environment, Absolutely. and you shouldn't be behaving like that. And so many of us get caught in that trap 
that's the thing to remember. So I, I you know, that, that's that's a, a valid, valuable point. You're only as good as your last job oh in this boy. business. I Isn't can't that say that the enough. Truth. And um, you know, I always say leave them laughing. Yeah. But and you, you know, do. the other point is is that you want your you you want your client to feel comfortable hiring you back. Yes. Because you know, you're not an eight to five job. You you are you are counting on you you to be your name to be in good standing yes and repeat business and the first one they Two. think about when they go we've got another shoot next absolutely. week absolutely call gary hyman audio. right right yeah. and and it's line of sight hiring a lot too oh sure it is you know you'll be uh, you'll be at lunch producer yeah. gets a call for another project and looks around the table and go who who do i want to be with yeah who do i want to be with and they'll pull you off to the side, or they'll just even call you out. Yeah. Just and say, hey. are you available next week? Yep. yep. Boom, put it in your book. Yep. That's so, it. That's you know, it. Um, it is key, key, key to bring your A game every single That's shoot. That's right. And and you know what uh, What a lot of people don't assume we say, oh, yeah, we'll bring your, you know, are you available next Wednesday? That, with you and your package, that's 800 bucks next oh, Wednesday. All day. That's a, that's a big payday. That's Absolutely. a big payday. You fill that up three times that week, and you're mm -hmm. taking home all the bacon you need. You Absolutely. Know? Um, uh, it's, it's so... Uh, people really miss that in this business, I think. The good ones, yes, they know it intuitively almost. But mm -hmm. a lot of people forget, and it gets real comfortable, especially when you're first coming on set. You're young, and then you've taken over, and you're more sure. comfortable on set. That first year and a half, two-year time, is the time to really start polishing those skill, those set skills. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. That you do, that you do. So now you're you're hired and and you're getting busier, busier. And now let's talk about equipment. What do you buy for equipment? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times which what I what I used to do is I would just go ahead and rent equipment in the beginning. Okay. And then I would see what what equipment would 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 perform well under certain conditions, right? because there's all sorts of conditions in the Orange County and L.A. market. Absolutely. And, you know, and see which one, you know, stood the test of time. And uh, a lot of times I wouldn't go out and buy new because you could save sometimes up to 50, 60, 70 percent on used equipment. Mm -hmm. And it might be just a year old, two years old. But here's the deal. As soon as you buy something new and you take it out of the box, it's used. It's used. So, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, it's a great thing to buy some items new. Yes, I agree. But a lot of the items, and if you had it tested, you know, by who's ever selling it, or you have it tested if you're buying a, uh, by a private party, uh, could be a good a good deal, a very good deal, and long lasting. I've got items that I bought used that are still good 20 years later. Right. So uh, those are good purchases, and they paid themselves off time and time again. Oh yeah, over and over. So and over. you know, through trial and test. You know, that's how you get your gear together. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, uh, what's what's the gear that's going to be easily, you know, placed on a person, you know, like microphone. Right. Uh, especially hiding mic. Right. You know, I had to go through a lot of mics to figure out Which what doesn't the cause light. the rustle. Right. You know, what uh, what sounds the best. Yeah. So, yeah, it was trial and error. Yeah. Trial and error yeah. for years yeah. and years. Yeah. And, you know, uh, uh, that is such a crucial thing for sound because I know I'm... Um, the right equipment is everything. Every sound guy I talk to is very specific about what he wants, the Absolutely. equipment he wants. You know, it may not match from guy to guy, sure. but they they have their own that they like, and that's what they're going to use. You know, mm -hmm. because it's been proven to them. Right. Because the sound guy, and this is another thing, I always came from a group at a department that had several people attached to it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I had I was the gaffer, so I had a, be, a key grip mm -hmm. and a best boy and and a couple of grips or whatever, you know, out there. So I was in a group. The sound man always shows up alone. Right. Shows up with everything he needs. Sure. He um, <clears throat> he's always getting buffeted around the set, depending on where the lighting guys have to light, or what he's, he's got to find the way to get the boom in there mm -hmm. without causing a shadow. It's 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 a very it's a single. I don't want to say loner because it's not really loner, but it's a lonesome department. It sure is. You know, it sure is. And I know, I know that you've gone for it, and inevitably, and I want you to speak about this. Mm -hmm. Everything's lit. Everybody signed off. Tell it to do that. Last touch-ups have been done. Right. We're finally up. Prompter and script <laughs> have been fixed. We're okay. We're good. 
You know what I mean? We're an hour away from lunch now. Right. And by God, we're going to get something off it. Sure. And the talent starts in, and the sound guy goes, could you hold for sound? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. And uh. then the famous, the famous saying that is on every set, mm -hmm. every time, every uh. day, waiting on sound. Yes. I have nightmares about that saying. I hear you. Every, I hear every you. Uh, when I was, uh, when I was really... Of doing my sound thing, that was that was horrible, and yeah. pe and people would just rip me. Oh, they rip uh, you uh, new no, one. We, we not even on set. It would just be even even just hanging out with my buddies. Yeah, and they said, "Hey, Gary, can you get me a beer?" Yeah. You know, and and all of a sudden I get up and I, I hear this waiting on a beer. <laughs> so I, it followed me wherever I went, wherever I, I went. I that that little saying. And you know what's so funny is is that it's, this is the, the I think what a lot of people don't think about. So many times, okay, that that first take is actually the first time that they're hearing somebody Absolutely. in the real situation. Absolutely. Because it's one thing to say, just like these guys right. did before test, the show, test. hey, yeah. Bernie, give me a test sure. for the audio, you know, tell me what you had for breakfast or something like that. It's not until they get into the real dialogue you hear. Absolutely. And then also, so crucially, as you know, body position. Because that person is now in their costume yes. or their wardrobe, and they're in a different body position. Now you just hear the mic rustling b behind the tie or something Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. And that's when you hear it for the first time in the real sure. time. So it's it's a bad rap. But you know that, you know, I mean, you have to be, and this is, you are a classic case of this. You have to be a certain personality type to be successful in this business. And you have all those skills. That's something I've always admired about you greatly. Thanks. Um, uh, so you, you would go with the role. I mean, you would sure. go with it, yeah, ha, ha, you know, now we get it fixed and do it. But you were consistent enough. I remember, Gary, when I was starting out, because you'd have to remember mm -hmm. my point of view, I saw somebody who was working every single day and turning jobs down oh, yes. every week oh, yes. because you were so busy. And you even threw me in there. I was a sound guy oh, for sure. you several times. Sure. Um, that's, that is great, but... As you went on, and you were so popular, give me a feel for that, because I knew there came a, there, there came a point of burnout or, right. or whatever. Right. So d just talk to me about the heydays. Yeah, you know, the heydays were absolutely fantastic. Met the greatest people on yeah. earth. If I had to do it all over, over again, I'd, I'd repeat. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, people were, were just, just nice, nice people to me. Yeah. And we became very good friends over the years, and hung out on social events. Also, oh, yeah. became part of my part of my family fabric. I mean, we hung fabric. out. It was, we, we hung, hung out, out all, for years uh, and years. Yeah, plenty, yeah. plenty years, and just you know, great stories and the funnest time ever. But you know, uh, what the deal was um, back then? There were probably in you know in the late '80s, early '90s, there was maybe uh, maybe ten colleges throughout the United States that would offer. Oh, you, radio, not television, many. and film, not, not many. many at all. No. So every year, eh, it might be a thousand people across the United States might graduate. And then uh, a certain amount would be producers, some of the directors coming out of college, right. cameraman. Very so, few audio. Uh, <laughs> nearly none <Yeah. laughs> audio right. guys would come up the right. ranks. So with my name in the mix uh, down here in the Orange County market, I was one of maybe, maybe five guys. Wow covering the whole Orange County, San Diego market. And I'd be pulled up to L.A. when they when there was too of much course. going out to L.A. Of course. So, yeah, if a, a slow week would be seven days a week. Yeah. Me, that'd right. be a slow week. No, I slow remember week. those and if days. if I wasn't turning down another seven, then it'd be really slow. And, of course, our, our favorite term was was double dip. Oh, double dip. Double I, dip. Double How many dip. times did we double well, dip something? Well, I, I think I hold did. A, you hold the record. I, I, I did a quad dip one one time. Unbelievable. I did four jobs, four jobs in, in one, one day. day. Unbelievable. I, I held the record. I, Unbelievable. Luckily, all the jobs matched Pulling up on, in yeah. time. Yeah. But that was a 24-hour period that, I, you know, yeah. that took a toll, but... Yeah, well, we, and able the able to producers that. were willing to risk that absolutely. at the time because there was no there other was no sound other, guy. No other sound guy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember uh, on a couple double dip times that uh, one of the grips or gaffers was just hanging out, and I said, "Hey, I've got to leave. I've got to hit another set. Here, just put the headsets on <laughs> and twist the little knob and make sure you don't go into the red." Yeah, yeah. Look like you're looking. And at every me. once in a while, just pass out. 
you know, go to sleep or just say plane, uh, car, and it was great. Uh, it, it, was, it was great. Uh, I got saved a lot of times by some good, great buddies of mine on the set. Thanks, Dan. Oh by the way, if you're God. out there listening, wake up now. Well, no, yeah, and I wanted to, I wanted to talk to Dan Cosby oh, right yes. now. Do we have any? Do we have any questions? Anybody send any questions in there? No? Oh, no one's in it. Wake up, Dan. Come on, Come Dan. On. Come on. We want a question. Get it out here. Get it out here. <laughs> All right. Put that thing out and That's write right. a question. <laughs> Thank you. So um, as time went on, um, sound, uh, you know, sound was awesome and, um, you know, uh, had a great little life going. And, but I noticed the camera guy would show up in a brand new car every year. Yeah, funny how that and happens. Funny. And, and then I would I would drive to the cameraman's house, and they'd be up in the hills. Yeah. You know, you, beautiful you had a house, long beautiful family. Yeah. 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 So I'm going, wait a second. Uh, they're working maybe half the time, and they're making a lot more money than I am. Right. So I thought, oh, I get it. Why don't I get into the camera business? They right. stick with sound, but buy a camera. Sure. And then that way, I'm on set. And they go, oh, only if we had a second camera. And I go, oh, I have got, I've got one out in the car. Yeah. And literally, I, I'd be known as the, the, the audio oh, guy I, yeah. with a lens or a camera in their trunk ready to go at no, any time. When you stumbled upon that formula, and I remember it well, it was brilliant. Yes. It was brilliant. And that was, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, I don't think you had this camera, but that's when the Sony 600 was like the the... Acknowledge yeah. workhorse oh, yes. of the industry. Oh, you yes. know, everybody would call for a 600. And right. then it went to sort of the Sony D30. Yes. Was very popular, which I know you had a I couple had of those. I had two or three of those. Two or three of those. And those were workhorses, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so that made you almost a no-brainer. Hey, we've got Gary. He's mm -hmm. got three setups. He's got three cameras or whatever. He can bring those out. He's audio. So now you're into... Engineering. Yes. Now you're engineering the cameras. Absolutely. You're setting them up. You're doing audio, and now right. you're now you're taking on a much bigger a piece of the pie. Right. Absolutely. Uh, the camera guys back then were were just just happy as a lark because usually when a camera guy got hired, he'd have to set up the camera, set up the lighting, and sometimes even direct the interview. Yes. A, a lot yes. because a producer would just show up and shake hands with everybody and and get everybody you know, paid, but yeah. the, the camera guy had all the responsibilities. So what I would do is I'd come in, I'd set up the three cameras. I, I was going to be touching the cameras anyways by putting in my audio cable. So I'm right there. I set the time code, jam sync the cameras and made everything match. And the camera guys spent their time lighting, working with the talent, and it just made for a great, great shoot. Yeah. And it just, it, it relieved some of the stress that the yeah. camera operators yeah. would have. And a lot of the guys in the business, they just didn't want to play the camera game. Yeah. Uh, they were just labor only. They liked to operate. They just they, they did, wanted they, to operate. But it's a own. tough thing, too. And this is something that I, I cover in Onset University and all that, too, is, um, uh, uh, is that it's tough having a piece of equipment. You're a different thing. You're not just oh, yeah. a freelancer. You're, you're busy. You're sure. busy. You know, in fact, I think we're going to take a little break now. Let's okay. come back to that, and then I want to hear how you did in your in your camera your camera world. All right. right, we'll be right back. Bernie's workshop is fantastic. Bernie's workshop is awesome. Bernie's workshop is insightful. Bernie, in one word, passionate. Maybe you can tell he really cares a lot. Bernie is a badass. <laughs> He's a great teacher. He has great stories, and I would recommend this to anyone. Not only someone like me who's starting day one, but you know, I feel that in any profession, as you sharpen your sword, it always gets sharper. I think the one, the best thing about this is, is the access to understanding how to run your business, how to actually be in this filmmaking industry and make money at it. Coming to this workshop, I think, is what actually gets you the tools to understand how to do that, how to get out there and, and sell yourself. I thought that was really cool. I thought, um, he, I mean, he knows all the tricks in the book, and uh, he knows how to show that to us and actually demonstrate it so we actually know what he's talking about. I really like the, the hands-on experience. That's, that's something that you don't find a lot. That's something you have to go on, on set a lot to, uh, to just appreciate. I know we, this is lighting seminar, but it's not only talk about lighting. He also share his business experience, personal experience, and tell us, guide us to what we should do, what kind of personality we should have in this business. His stories, I think that they kind of 
say, say everything all in a few example stories that he gives out from time to time. I would recommend this workshop to anybody who just spread into the industry, people who just don't know the swing of it. Um, a lot of the stuff they don't teach you in film school. I deal with a lot of freelancers every day, a lot of peers that I went to school with, a lot of professionals in the field, and they all need to take this class because it just, it just it puts you on the next level, on the next playing field. Bernie's a great guy. Bernie's really authentic. Like, everything he learns, everything he teaches, the way he handles himself, the way he deals with other people, he's a one-of-a-kind guy. Someone I've never come across before in the industry and someone I hope to emulate and hope that there are more people like him out there that can help. Hey everybody, we're back with Gary Hyman, my good buddy, one of my favorite people in the industry. And so we're just talking, Gary, about when you uh, you had started to transition from audio and you bought three or four mm -hmm. cameras and then now you were doing audio and camera setups. Absolutely. And I remember those heady days. You were so busy back oh, then. Boy. And, oh uh, boy. And you know, like you, for me, same thing. The money started rolling in during absolutely, those times. Absolutely, there were some really good times back yeah. then. And uh, one one little uh, tool that I used uh, to attract more business was, uh, you know, when you would send a client uh, an invoice, right, for either services rendered or camera rentals. Yeah, it was just basically you'd imagine they they'd open up the envelope and then your hand would come out. Yeah. and go pay me. Yeah. So what I started doing uh, was based upon the, the, the total cost of the, the invoice, I'd usually make it anywhere from 1% to 3%, yeah. and I would include a Starbucks card. Okay. And, um, and that's now, when they had the coupons, right? Well, well, well the, the the, it was an actual card. Oh, an actual card. Uh, the, okay. the, it's the ones they sell right at the cash register. Yeah. But they were very, you know, it just said Starbucks. They didn't right. have all the fancy yeah. graphics on them as they have yeah. today. But, um, and it was great. Uh, actually, um, a funny story is uh, a good a good friend of mine, a guy named Rick Stewart, who works at Pitts. Yeah, Rick. Yeah, I just Rick's saw him the other day. Guy. Yeah. Um, I remember one time we were going through the one of the first drive-through Starbucks. Okay. In Palm Springs, and uh, we were going through it. It was the crew and I and Rick just finished up a job, and he said we got up to the window. He said Rick said, "Hey, I'm buying." Everybody goes, "Oh, that's great! Finally, finally, you're, you're stepping up." And, he, pull, and he, he looks at me and he pulls out one of my cards <laughs> that I gave him. And it was like $25, whatever. Yeah. And I go, that's great. I got a rebate on, on my, uh, my, my gift card. Yeah, the rebate you go. came back. You got one cup of coffee. I got one cup of, of copy out of the deal. There, it there was, you it go. was great. That's awesome. That's so, awesome. Um, but you know what? You and know? Here's, a, here's an important thing. I'll be honest with you. When, I, when you did that, and I remember it well, I thought, my God, Gary's a, just a shameless kiss. Oh, yes. You know, he's just, even I'm embarrassed by it, and I'm not <laughs> even involved with it, you know? But you know what, dude? That was my own ignorance. And the brilliance of what you did there, saying thank you to a client, is so important. So important. I don't think you have to, you know, I mean, it's a good idea. I don't think you have to send something every time you invoice, right. but boy, do clients remember it? Absolutely. Do clients appreciate it? Do people say, somebody thank me for this job? I will admit, I have been somebody who's probably fallen down on that. You know, I should do a much better job than when I go back and talk to my clients and say, thank you so much. Sure. We really appreciate the work. You know, sometimes I just get so busy. I, I'm, I'm thinking about the next thing on because you're Absolutely. always preparing for the next shoot. But that was brilliant, Gary, and I know it got you a lot yeah, of work. Yeah, it, it, it sure did. It, it got me a lot of repeat work because you got to remember, uh, your last visual you have of that client yeah. is that goodbye, have a great time, uh, you know, a uh, great shoot. We'll see you on the next time. Yeah. So that's it. You, your connection has been lost. Yes. But when you send that invoice, you get that new connection. That's the it next really handshake. It reconnects you. That's yeah. your next handshake going, hey, thank you so much for choosing Hyman Productions, Inc. Great, uh, great to be with you. And you give you a little spiel, you know, and you can write it on the card. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Starbucks card. It could be, you know, movie tickets. It could be anything. It could be anything that uh, either himself can use. And one, one thing I noticed that even if they did not drink coffee, they were able to give that card, because it wasn't in their name, to their client. 
also. So when right. they had meetings right. for the next project, they could re-gift. They can re-gift. <laughs> and, uh, abs absolutely, absolutely. I so, can't believe a producer would possibly right. think of that. But, but, but hey, you never know. Of you course, never they know. might. They the might. gift that keeps on giving. That's right. That's so right. That, That's that brilliant. Was, that worked it's out great. Very good. Very good. But it just points out too that you had customer service on the top of your mind way back from your absolutely. days in, in the VCR business and, and, the, and the, the carried VHS over. Business. Carried over, and that was something. For me, you were instrumental because that's something I learned from you that it was so, because no one else had that those no. characteristics. It was so busy, it was about, yeah, jam, give me it, and, and I'm sure. on to the next one. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's um, true. Uh, that was so good, and that's why you've been, that you are still in the business today, and you are still working, and I know things have changed for you, oh, things boy. have changed for me. You know, oh, yes. they're, they're um, and, and, and we'll spend a few minutes on this, but let, mm -hmm. let me just talk about this because, no one in Orange County was better connected than Gary Hyman. And even the people you didn't know knew you. Absolutely. And that was huge. That Absolutely. was huge. Now, going to, um, what, there, there's a before and after for me. It's almost like, a, you know, AD and, and BC, you know, or, or, or whatever. Sure. You know, you know. Um, uh, what is it? What is it? It's, it's, it's BC. Right. Right? Oh, right. And AD. And AD, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so there's that for 2009 yeah, for me. Right. That is mine on 2009. Before 2009, we lived in a whole different production yes. world. After 2009, we just lived in a whole new world. Yes. It was, it was all, everything was off. And I know both you and I got hit very hard in mm -hmm. 2009 when the change came. And one of the issues there, too, was that... <clears throat> The people who hired us all got fired in like a three-month period. Yeah. Everybody was gone. Everybody. Yeah. And in their place came 25-year-olds who were just graduated yes. and, and probably major, majored in, in marketing and, and social media was their thing. Certainly not production. No. Certainly not video production. No. So you took a big hit then. I took a big hit. Tell me how you survived those days. Yeah, I was real fortunate. Um, uh, one, I had one fairly large client mm -hmm. uh, in the utility business that uh, they uh, they really had this um, uh, thought about covering all their meetings for liability issues uh, to make sure that if somebody wasn't at that meeting, that it was recorded and they banked. had the ability to. They had the ability, yeah. and they created what was called a portal, and uh, they could go onto the portal and rewatch that meeting anytime. They, they uh, you know, they they were available. Plus, it was a liability issue for the company too, because um, if something was said at that meeting, and somebody comes back six months later and says, "Oh, well, they they didn't tell me about that." They had proof, documentation. Had documentation of that meeting. Yeah. So that that kept me really busy during during the the the, the so the a, short a lot times. of yeah. other clients were leaving. Absolutely. But they kept you going. They kept me busy, and gotcha. I was real fortunate. Real fortunate. I always say that uh, you have to have at least two or three mainstay clients if right. you're gonna if you're gonna maintain in this business. At least. Yeah, at least. At least. At least. Yeah. What, um, and, and, and I have my own philosophy on this, and I've been lucky, lucky, I would have to say, it wasn't because I figured it out early or anything like that, but I have a, quite a wide diversity of clients. N n my biggest client is 15% of my total business, right. so I'm able to fall back all the time if I need to. Sure. How big, uh, uh, in the day, like say in that mm -hmm. 2009 period, sounds like you had somebody who was close to like 50 to 60%. Oh, it was well over 50%. Okay. Oh, well, okay. well, well over 50%. Well over 50%. Just very fortunate <clears throat> that uh, through their, their, their management change, yeah. uh, you know, somebody always came in and my name was always brought up That's through awesome. somebody in the department. Because you always solved the problem. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so, so with that and, and that transition, of course, you're really walking on eggs now. Oh, because boy. Now your one client is almost the whole... Enchilada. The whole, yeah, the whole <laughs> basket there. Sure. You know. Um, and then from that point, tell me the process that you did. Is, was there a rebuilding or is it... Yeah. Is it, tell me about that. Yeah, everything uh, goes through cycles. Yep. Uh, I noticed. And uh, 
the big the, the big thing now is that the equipment has got a, a lot cheaper to buy the purchase. Yes, that's number one. Number two, there are so many people in this business now. Yeah, uh, uh, I can't tell you how many colleges, high schools, private colleges have opened. Yeah, to you know to get people into this business. So there's a total influx, and now with YouTube out there. Um, that has become the shooting norm, you know, the look right. of, of a lot of people's vision. Right. So now I get calls from, uh, from clients that say, hey, we've got this shooting. I said, oh, fantastic. Uh, get, get the regular crew. Uh, you want an action adventure. You want a documentary stuff. No, we want it YouTube style. And I go, YouTube style? And they, uh, they go, yeah. And I go, oh, you mean... Lots of headroom, bad audio, and bad lighting. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's what it. we want. That's the look we're that's looking for. That's the look for. we're looking for. I'm going, you got to be kidding me. And also, the message now, yeah. you know, the corporate message, there's no more long version anymore. Right. It's all short version. Oh, it's all short version. It's, yeah. it's yeah. you know, the, the CEO comes on, says, rah, 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 get back to work. Yeah. So yeah. if you can't get your message across within 30 seconds, you've lost your audience. But you know, Bottom Gary, line. you know, here's the thing, too, and this is the reality of it. It's different than when we were, that's what makes it tough on us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, to, to, because we know the difference, you know. Right. But it was, the, it was the pipeline that changed. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. The D5 came out. Yeah. You know what I mean? That came out. That was, that, that was a huge game changer. Sure. Much more, you know, red was a huge game right. changer. Right. Oh, yes. Even, but that kept the standard higher. When we lost all that, when it all changed up and stuff, it became, there's actually a, a, a thing, there was more work, but it paid less. Exactly. So you had to make that transition. And I know that was difficult for both of us in sure doing was. that, but it was also something, I think, inevitable. Absolutely. You know, this this is a much better ground for us. And for what I have found, I don't know about you, because it's probably a little different with lighting. By the time somebody hires me, they have acknowledged creative going on. In other words, this isn't just a YouTube video. Right. It's going to be something that we do a narrative sure. on and we want to look and a feel and emotion. You know what I mean? That all that all comes into play with me. Yes. They don't want to just record it. You know what I mean? So I was able to sort of go out and maintain a, a certain level, but I had to do backflips and oh, change a uh, lot. Yes. You know what I mean? I think it was different for the camera guys, and it's more based on price. You know what I mean? Sure. Audio, in my mind, is still one of the most important departments right. on any shoot. Right. You know, because as I've said, I think I said it last week even, that you could do, I could light an, a, a video for you and it would be perfect, but if you don't have audio on it, it will never see the light of day. Wow. If yeah. you just have a recording, but no no video, you can still make an interview sure. work, right? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. so all of those things come into, uh, um, you know, in, into, into play. And I know mm -hmm. it's been tough, it's been good. I love this business, I love the people, and I think the young people probably have a tougher time than we did oh, yeah. coming up right now because we were able to have the money to play with. Sure. We could build ourselves up and buy those homes, and I know you mm -hmm. bought a couple of homes during the, the good, good days. Years, yeah. And uh, uh, that I think it's a much tougher thing for somebody to come up and cut themselves out of the pack Absolutely. right now. So Absolutely. So because there's just more of them. Oh, Gary. So we're getting in the last few minutes. Sure. Buddy. Anything? Tell us what you're working on now. Tell us well, what's going um, on. Well, I've uh, got into droning. Uh, droning um, is uh, a new way to to uh, get uh, you know a message across or get a different different look uh, yeah. of of um, you know of a uh, of an event, special event yeah. or a project. Uh, in the old days, you used to have to hire a helicopter, ten thousand dollars an hour. Yeah, and and uh, you you know you have to be the uh, the helicopter operator, the camera operator. Right. Today, for less than fifteen hundred dollars, you could be up in the air recording four K. Yeah, it yeah. is simply amazing. Yeah. So, um, I think a and license actually, is dude, in my not future. only cutting out the <laughs> helicopter, in many cases, you're cutting out the jib. Yeah, absolutely. You're almost cutting out a steady cam. Absolutely. absolutely. You know what I mean? So there's a, there's a lot of ways that is gone. You right. Know? And once again, it's a very competitive, crowded field. Oh, too, yes. You know, but the same things will hold true. If you're skilled at what you do. Absolutely. And you've got good customer service and you're out there and you're 
advertising yourself, right. which I think, and that's something, you know, I've been on you about. Yes. You know, I've been on you about because you have so much to sell and you don't sell. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So yeah. that I will never stop annoying but you yes, about I'm that. Yes, yeah. you, I'm glad you're my fire, buddy. Yeah, I'm yeah, glad you're my yeah. fire. Because, because what, you, what you are, I mean, that's a story unto itself. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure, so, sure. So that's really good. If somebody wants Gary Hyman on their set, how do yeah. they get a hold of him? Well, the name of the company is Hyman Productions, Inc. Uh, and if you not, need Spell to reach it. out, Spell sure, Hyman. it's H-E-I-M-A-N-N -N Productions, Inc. And you can reach me at Gary H Productions at me.com. Okay, Gary H Productions at me.com. Me okay. and, and if you also have uh, the courage <laughs> to actually talk on a cell phone, the number is 714-821-7000. What's that again? 714-821-7000. Okay. Okay. Great. That's yeah. great. That's great. I yeah, know. Talking on the phone. My phone doesn't ring as yeah, much. But I get a lot more text. I'll yeah, tell you yeah, that. Yeah, it's I get texts and emails <laughs> and, 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 and all of that. But I am literally surprised that, that the, my phone does not ring like no. it was. Remember that? And I mean, that, that's true for me sometimes, too. We couldn't get off the off the phone. I remember me, you, Dan, and Andy together. Yes. There would literally be one to two guys always on the phone, no right. matter where you were. You That's know, right. With a call coming in, a deal going on, or whatever. Yeah, I remember uh, we went down to uh, Balboa Arena, uh, Balboa Island, and yeah. we all we all got on an electric boat. Yes. And I remember we all put our cell phones. Yeah. On the table, and we all said, first one to get work." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everybody else has got to buy them dinner. Yeah, yeah. And we're waiting, waiting, and I forgot whose phone it went off, but they grabbed it, and they're going, oh, hi, how are you doing, da 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 Well, it was their wife. <laughs> so that didn't count. So they made it sound like... <laughs> they made it sound like, sure, yeah, I'm available. Yeah. Sure, of course. Yeah, at five? Yeah, at I'll five. be there at five. <laughs> but, but, but when he hung up, when they hung up, we checked the number. We called that yeah. number, and it was the wife. Uh, there you go, there you go. <laughs> Gary, it's absolutely been a complete delight Thank you, having you Thank on you. today, buddy. Appreciate uh, it. It's been so nice because this is one of the few times that I've ever been able to spend an hour with oh, you yes. in the last few years and absolutely. even talk. So, absolutely. So it's great. we got to do it again, buddy. Sure thing. All right, that's it. That's it for today here at Bernie's Apple Box. We will be back next week, Friday at 2 o'clock, and uh, I'll see you on set. Thanks. Cut. That's a wrap.